In this tutorial, learn how to repurpose the fabulous fabrics in your life by transforming them into your own unique cushion cover with a professional zip finish. By upcycling existing materials that may be tired or simply fallen out of fashion and refashioning them into usable love pieces again, you'll keep ahead of the latest decor fashions with an off-trend statement that tells its own story. So I brought this beautiful tablecloth from H&M home um, really not that long ago, a few months ago, um, but it's a rectangle and um, we've literally just changed our table to a circular table and um, try as I might, um, there's not quite enough fabric here for me to turn it into something that looks good on our new table. So. Um, Firstly, I love the fabric, and so I really still want this in my life. But secondly, um, it's just such a huge and good quality piece of fabric um, that I really don't want it to go to waste. So it's time to change it and repurpose it into something completely new. So today I'm going to show you how to make um, a cushion with a zip fastening out of um, this medium weight um, if you can have a look here, it's quite a tight woven fabric, so it's not, um, you can't really see the holes in between the weave. Um, and if you can get a sense of sort of the weight of the fabric. Um, anything lighter than this really, it's going to sort of look a bit more pillowcasey. it won't have as much structure to it. Um, something heavier, um, a curtain fabric would work. Um, and so any sort of upholstery fabrics are ideal obviously for a cushion because they're hard wearing as well um, but anything too light isn't going to be hard wearing and it's just not going to have as much structure but equally anything too heavy or too plasticky you are going to, when I say plasticky I'm thinking sort of waterproofy kind of oil clothy might find it hard to get through your machine in the first instance you're going to need to build up to something like that so we're going to need our fabric um, and it's going to need to be big enough to cut out two pieces for your cushion. So this is my cushion pad that I'm using. I've measured it from edge to edge and sorry there's a bit of a tight space and edge to edge here um, and I know that this is 16 inches square so you just need to take the measurements of your own as well and again this this one happens to be new um, but you can repurpose from an existing cushion and recover something that you've already got um, and you're going to need um, two pieces of fabric that match the size of your cushion dimensions you're then going to need um, in order to do that a tape measure um, straight edge, uh, I've got a fabric pen here, this irons out, just test it on your fabric before you use it, it's a friction pen, um, they're really really handy but they can scar the fabric sometimes so just make sure you use it on hidden places only but really good because it irons away and as a rule always on the reverse anyway um, of your fabric. Um, I've got um, pins, um, a hand sewing needle, uh, cotton to match my cushion covers, a contrasting um, thread as well, um, that will become obvious later, uh, fabric scissors and I've got um, actually a, I've gone for a contrasting zip here. This is a standard zip so you can see the teeth are here. Um, we'll do a concealed zip on a different um, tutorial and my cushion is um, 16 inches so I've gone for a 14 inch zip um, but actually because it's the plastic teeth um, I can adjust that anyway I'll show you how to do that um, if you are using something with metal teeth you're going to have to be really accurate with your measurements for your zip because um, you won't be able to cut over it or sew over it um, and oh yeah importantly a cup of tea um, half drunk and cold actually in my instance <laughs> and then the final things you'll need are um, the feet for your sewing machine so you'll need a sewing machine you can do all of this by hand but obviously it's a, a sort of lengthier more labour intensive um, labour of love I should say project then um, and I've got my regular foot for my sewing machine here so um, this should look familiar to what's already on your machine probably um, mine is J the brother machine and then my um, zip foot which on my machine again a brother um, is an I so you should have one of those as probably your basic kit okay let's get started
so I've just laid out my fabric I'm working on the reverse of it here so you can see there's the pattern side um, you don't need to worry too much about the direction of the um, of the fabric in terms of um, which way the stretch goes which way the grain runs um, for a cushion cover we'll talk about that again in a, in a different tutorial but what you do want to probably be um, thinking about is the pattern placement so um, on my tablecloth for instance um, it has a wider border at the um, long edge uh, than it does at the sides. So when I cut, I want to cut, um, again, in the sort of um, spirit of being as thrifty as possible as we can with fabric and making the most of it. I want to cut, um, sorry, excuse the shadow, um, cut as best as I can um, to the edge and to make the most of my fabric, but I also want to place it so I'm gonna get the pattern as well on it because otherwise you'll end up with a strip. Uh, where there isn't any pattern and that won't match then necessarily the other side of your cushion as well so it's just something to think about when you're laying it out so I'm just finishing up uh, cutting out um, the second panel here um, and what I think is probably worth mentioning is that you can see that it's a little bit crumpled and um, partly that's the nature of um, this this kind of fabric a little bit um, the odd crease light crease like this isn't going to make a difference but it is worth giving your fabric an iron before you do any cutting out because any heavy creases are going to impact the shape of your final um, cut out piece and really um, to make life as easy as possible for yourself you want to make that sure that these corners are nice and square and your edges are nice and straight so they match up really nicely so now I have my two squares of fabric that match exactly the size of my cushion cover so I haven't added any seam allowance um, to the pattern that we've just cut out um, the seam allowance that we use um, will just make the cushion cover um, sit a little bit tighter and a little bit nicer on the cushion by cutting it the exact same size as the cushion um, and these match nicely with each other so when we come to pairing them up um, they'll sit nicely so what I'm going to do now is um, just to stop the edges fraying here particularly around where the zip's going to be I'm going to zip around um, all four edges of both pieces of fabric with um, I'm actually going to use an overlocker or a serger um, if you're in the states um, but you could use um, a small zigzag stitch it, just to catch those edge threads um, so they don't don't fray into your cushion <laughs> So now I've um, overlocked the edge to keep the edge of the fabric nice and um, tidy and I've just snipped off um, my threads as well. So what you want to do is lay your bottom piece of fabric down um, with the right side of the fabric up. So um, the right side of the fabric is the patterned side and the wrong side is the side that will be hidden. So you want your first piece of fabric facing up and you want to um, have a look at it um, and see which way round you want the pattern um, to sit. And then you take your second piece of fabric and again you have a look at which way round you want your um, pattern to sit. Um, I mean mine's quite multi-directional so it doesn't make a huge amount of difference um, on mine. Um, sorry <laughs> show you there I'm just showing you a piece of desk rather than anything and um, then you're going to place uh, the top piece face down so we're going right sides together and then you're going to take each corner and match them up so once you've placed your fabrics uh, right sides together so pattern sides together and matched up all four of your corners so they're sitting beautifully on top of each other you want to take your zip and you want to sort of line it up in the center there and I for my purposes that zip is slightly too long so I'm gonna just trim it down I can do that because it's plastic teeth so I've got one that's slightly too long here but I want to give myself probably um, a good two inches at the um, at the edge of my cushion here so um, I'm gonna snip off um, my tail of my zip here okay I'm gonna make sure I keep my zipper right out of the way and snip about here and then because we'll lose the guard here which stops the zipper coming off I'm just going to take this over to the machine and just do some stitches across the bottom here just in case my zipper comes down um, I don't want it falling off the bottom of my zip because <laughs> that's a real pain 
okay? Okay, so here's the tail I've snipped off and here I've just stitched across in the similar sort of place to where the guard would have been before and that will keep your zip nice and secure for when you're working with it now. Okay, so I've centered my zip on my project and um, we're just focusing on the bottom edge, so the hidden edge really um, of the cushion at the moment. So this will be the edge that actually sits on the sofa or whatever you're putting on um, so you can't see the zip. So um, I've centered it and just here, so just where the zipper um, closes, I've put a pin in um, there like so and I'm working um, with my pins or oh, what's the best way of describing it vertically to the fabric um, and I've done exactly the same here so where it closes I've put a pin in here again uh, vertically so you can um, move your zip away again for a moment now and if you want um, you can pop some more pins in along here to hold your fabric nice and straight um, by using your pins um, vertically um, in this way um, means that you can actually sew over them um, so it's a nice little tip and it just saves you um, pulling them out of your project as you go and what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the machine um, and I'm going to do um, a normal stitch I mean it doesn't need to be too small to be honest I'm going to use three on mine um, so back stitch here um, to hold it nice and tight we're going to do a three stitch and we're going to back stitch at the pin then we're going to put the stitch length up as high as it will go because ultimately these next stitches are going to be unpicked so um, put it up to five or seven whatever your machine goes to stitch all the way along to the next pin and back stitch um, and then you're going to go back to whatever your smallest stitch was, mine was a three and we're going to go along again and then back stitch there. So we will have closed the bottom edge um, but we'll have done so using two different length stitches okay so we're going to go smaller stitch, long stitch as you possibly can all the way to the other pin, smaller stitch not forgetting your reverse stitches um, at each end to make sure that nothing nothing comes undone. Okay, so we're gonna go over to the machine now. Okay, so I'm using um, a centimeter seam allowance here. Um, and um, I've also got cotton in my machine um, that matches um, matches my project now. The overlocking didn't matter that it was white because it's going to be completely hidden but you want to make sure that this matches now and um, just in case you um, see it the sort of pull of the seam um, just makes it look nice and neat. So we're going to start off with um, a reverse stitch um, and this is going to be um, on my um, number three, three millimeter stitch length. Okay so I've got a little back stitch here and then working, as I said, a centimetre um, seam allowance up to that first pin. And when we reach that first pin, we're going to do um, another back stitch. Okay, so a nice little reverse there to keep it nice and strong. Then I'm going to lengthen my stitch as high as it will go. So mine's a five on my machine. And keeping that... Um, uh, keeping that seam allowance we're going to sew all the way now down to your last pin okay. I'm trying to keep my arms out of the way of the camera for you <laughs> and we've reached that last pin so we're going to do a back stitch again And then I'm going to bring down my stitch length back down to three again and go to the end. And reverse stitch. And I'm going to take the needle out and cut my threads there. So um, effectively 
the stitches that you've done up to your first pin at either end will be the stitches you keep and the stitches in the middle will be where the zip is going to be placed so they're the ones that you're going to take out. So you need to take all your pins out now and you need to head over to the ironing board and you need to press this seam open. Okay, so um, I'll be with you in a moment. Okay, so now you've pressed this seam um, uh, to the reverse, so we're still working on the reverse of our project and you've pressed it open so you've got a nice flat seam to work along. Um, move your pins round, um, so mine were two inches in from the bottom uh, to where the zip was going to start and where it was going to end. And you're going to take your zip and you're going to place it um, right side down, okay? So you want it to be as straight along that seam as possible because the teeth are going to open up along here, okay? So you want to make sure you line everything up, go as straight as you can, okay? And make sure that that's fine that it's a little bit over there because we'll just stitch across there and remember that's the guard so you wouldn't have been stitching over that anyway. So now you've pinned, now you've got your zip in place, you're going to pin it, okay? So all the while keeping this central um, seam of the zip as close as you possibly can to that central seam here. Okay, so now you've got your pin zipped in place, it's nice and central um, along this bottom um, seam that we're doing at the moment. Um, you could take that straight to your machine, but it's not my preference. I think it's hard to sew with the pins in, so I'm going to hand tack. It sounds like a lot of extra effort, but um, honestly, three minutes tacking will save you a lot of frustration when it comes to um, getting it over to the machine and getting a nice finish on your zip. So as you can see, some rather hefty and rather uneven uh, tacking stitches have now replaced the pins, giving us a much flatter finish to be able to take to the sewing machine now. So I've just made sure that I've got one that holds the tails together at the top and it indicates the bottom here as well where I actually want to sew. Um, but we've kept um, that, that central seam of the zip in line with the seam of the project that we're working on the whole way along. And as you can see, I've used a contrasting um, thread for these basting stitches, um, which will make it much easier um, to take out, because um, we won't keep that stitching, so much, much easier to take out um, once we've put the zip in. So we'll head over to the machine now. So we're at the machine now. I've changed my um, foot over to the zip foot and I'm starting at the end of the zip um, where we chop the tails off, so the, the part without the head. Okay, so um, we're going to run along actually first to secure the zip. So just tear up and you're going to do um, a reverse stitch uh, to keep the stitches nice in place there and then across and I'd um, reverse stitch again here all the way back across because this is an area of um, sort of high wear so I've actually got three lines of stitching there okay so I'm then gonna um, lift my uh, presser foot, turn my project round and I'm going to start sewing along the zip. Um, I've overshot slightly there so I'm just going to reverse back one stitch because I like to keep the edge of oh, my foot just in line with um, the central seam of the zip here. So I've got um, if you can see the edge of my foot here in line with the center seam of my zip and um, the angle's not ideal there but um, and then once we're all on we're just gonna start stitching so I'm on um, a normal length stitch for me so I've not gone for anything too tiny so um, I've gone for another three so and slow and steady just wins the race here it's just about keeping as close up to the zip as you can but as straight as you can as well so just letting the machine take it through for you until you get all the way down to the head of the zip so the mechanism on the zip and as soon as you start to get close to that um, 
so you get a nice finish around the bulk. You're going to lift the presser foot up and you're going to shift the zip uh, back through. You can see I'm blocking the camera here with my fingers, I'm sorry. Give me a second. So with a little bit of jiggling you can pass the zipper head beyond the back of the needle and the foot and um, then just carry on sewing. You just want to keep those teeth together as much as you can at this point because um, we've shifted it a little bit there by taking the zip out. And then when you reach the end again you're gonna Here we go. Cross over and remember this is another hard wearing section so I'll do some back stitches. So now I've stitched along both sides of my zip. Um, I can uh, take out these basting stitches here. So I'm going to start by doing that. And now I've got rid of those green stitches, I've flipped my project over onto the right side and as you can see the um, seam with the wider stitching here is really wanting to push through so it's got a little bit blurry but we're going to now unpick these stitches so between uh, the areas that we did this really nice strong stitch all the way down uh, to here we're going to unpick and do the big reveal of the zip. So now you've um, unpicked those stitches, you can see um, you've got your zip under here and you just want to go ahead and take out these loose bits of thread so they don't get caught in your zip and then it's time to check that your zip opens nicely backwards and forwards. Um, oh, more fingers and thumbs whilst I'm holding the camera, sorry. But you can see here, um, by using this method, we've got a really nice sort of um, overlap here to the zip. And so whilst this isn't a fully concealed zip, we've got a really nice close finish there on our zip and that's going to look great. Okay, so keeping your zip um, at least partially open, you want it at least halfway, we're now going to take our project and we're going to work again with the right sides together. So put your right side down and you're going to go ahead again and match up all the corners. Okay, keeping that zip edge along the bottom and pin. Okay, so we're on the home straight now and we're gonna now everything's pinned nice and square across the project. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sew using a centimetre seam allowance around uh, the remaining three edges to close our pillowcase zip. Remember, this is a final warning to keep your zip halfway open, at least at this point, because otherwise you will not be able to um, turn your pillowcase, uh, sorry, your cushion cover back in the right way round. Okay, so final warning, make sure your zip's partially open. Okay, so you've sewn round all the corners and you've started turning your pillowcase back in uh, on itself to the right way, so now you're just going to get your hands in. You're going to really push up into those corners. Um, what you don't want to do to check get sharp corners is um, uh, to take a pair of scissors in there and push it up through. You want to get your finger in there, you want to get maybe a chopstick in there or something. I'm going to need both hands to do this but I'll show you um, how to push those right out into nice sharp crisp points. So once you've pushed them through as much as you can then you know you kind of want to just work the fabric back on itself a little bit just between your fingers and it brings it out into that nice um oh there's a bit of a loose thread we'll snip that off um nice corner and then when you take that over to the ironing board and really um pull back on uh these seams and iron them flat you'll get a really professional finish on what's going to be your finished and um, a cushion cover. Okay. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this tutorial has been useful and given you some inspiration on how you can turn your fabulous fabrics into unique statement pieces. As always, any questions, get in touch. I'm on all the socials. Take care for now. Bye.